Let's take a look at uh, two means um, dependent samples, mashed pairs as they're sometimes called. Now if we're um, doing claims regarding the difference of two means using the mashed pairs design, then we have some requirements. Uh, samples obtained using simple random sampling or through a randomized experiment. Sample data or mashed pairs. Uh, differences are normally disputed with no outliers or the sample size n is large, n is greater than 30. Some notation you see, d bar, that's the sample mean of the differences between the values and the mashed pairs. So you got, uh, for example, like a before and after uh, number, like before number is 20 and the after number is 10. Uh, the difference between them, d, uh, would be just subtracting them. Well, you do that for each one of your sets of data, and then d bar would be adding those numbers together and dividing by the total. So just your average of the, the differences. Now s sub d is a sample standard deviation of the differences. And let me um, talk briefly about that. Okay, so we got, um, let's say our pre and post. And this is 20, this is 10, this is 30, this is 25, um, this is 7, and this is uh, 2. Okay, so our differences, D, would just be subtracting. So 20 minus 10 is 10, 30 minus 25 is 5, and 7 minus 2 is yeah, that is come out as 5. Okay, so then d bar, we're going to add these together, 5, uh, 10, 20. d bar would equal to that total, divide by how many we have, and we have three, three of them. And so that would give us our, our d bar. And now the um, s sub d, was it d bar or sub, yeah, d. This is going to be this, the, the standard deviation of the differences. Okay, and mu sub d is the population mean difference for the mashed pairs. And that's where we're, we're using the sample to um, make the claim based upon is the population difference. Now this is the classical approach. We write down a shortened version of the claim, come up with a null and, alt, null and alternate hypothesis. H0 always has equals part on it. See if your claim matches H0 or H1. Draw the picture and split alpha into the tails. And um, here we're going to have mu sub d is not equal to zero, mu sub d is less than zero, or mu sub d is greater than zero. And then that'll dictate what kind of um, tail you have. Two tails, left tail, or right tail. Put your first list in L1, second list in L2, highlight L3, and enter L1 minus L2. Then find the critical values using the t-distribution table. Find the test statistic using the t-test. That's off your TA3, TA4. And if your test statistic falls on tail, reject H0. If your test statistic falls in the main body, accept H0. And then determine the claim based on step 3. Now here's how you do it by hand. Um, most of this is still the same. Um, critical values use T distribution table. The subtract values in the second list from the first list and find the mean uh, D bar and a sample standard deviation S of the other differences. I started doing that with this uh, example here, but I didn't go to the, the standard deviation. <clears throat> then you plug those in to this formula to get the test statistic. So T naught is equal to this. And then you compare your test statistic like before. I'm not going to go into detail on that because we're going to use the p value approach because uh, it's, it's simpler. And it's what you do in, in real life. You'll, you'll find p-value is the, the standard in research and so forth. Why do we even show the classical approach, the critical value approach then? Uh, in some cases, you have to use it. Maybe you don't have technology to give you a nice, uh, nice p-value. So um, in some cases, uh, the classical approach is um, simpler. In some cases, the classical approach is all there is. Okay, p-value approach. Write down a shortened version of the claim. Come up with a null and alternate hypothesis. H0 always has equals part on it. See if your claim matches H0 or H1. Put first, li first list in L1, second list in L2. Highlight L3 and enter L1 minus L2. Exit out. Then find the p-value using the t-test. And then we'll do our comparison, which we'll talk about. 
Um, P, well, if p value is less than alpha, reject H naught. If p value is greater than alpha, accept H naught. Determine the claim based on step three. Now you use the word accept. Most books do not use the word accept. They use do not reject. Accept is a really strong um, statement. Do not reject says that we, we, we don't reject it, but we don't necessarily accept it 100% either. <clears throat> Just we do not reject it. Okay, and I got um, I got this p-value approach by hand, if you're real curious how to do it. Um, but we're going to use a calculator in this video. <clears throat> so let's take a look at our first problem. I have to apologize for my voice. I've been sick this week. <clears throat> so if I clear my throat and I'm annoying, well, I've, I've drank something, I've taken medicine. <laughs> you just have to deal with it. Okay, given reaction time to red and, and reaction time to blue. Is the reaction time to red greater than the reaction time to blue? That sounds like our claim. So red greater than blue. You really want to be very um, sparse on your um, claim here. Red greater than blue. Now when I write that down, you first kind of scan these looking for your, your claim. Your first one here is always your first population, first sample. And then your second one here is always your second population, second sample. Use that as your convention. Um, so write down a shortened version of the claim, and then if whatever's here is one, whatever's here is two. Now really what this says, instead of um, red, I'm going to put mu sub r for red. So that's a mean of the red, population mean, is greater than mu sub b. This is the uh, population mean of the blue. Okay. Now, let's go back up here. I don't have it in the p-value approach there, but I do have it in the classical approach, which is why I kind of talked about it. Um, remember how we had mu sub d is not equal to zero, less than zero, and greater than zero. We're finding the differences. We're not actually comparing um, this directly. So what we're going to do is you take mu sub b over the left side, and we'll have mu sub r minus mu sub b is greater than zero. Now this we just generally call mu sub d. <clears throat> so again, we want to get zero on the right side. So whatever's over here you take over and then you have this set up. Okay, so that's our claim. The mean of the differences, population mean of the differences is greater than zero. Okay, step one. Write down a shortened version of the claim. We did that. Step two, come up with a null and altered hypothesis. Well, the mu sub d is greater than zero. We'll go on h1. The only symbols you can put on h1 are less than, greater than, or not equal to. And if this is a uh, greater than, then this will be mu sub d is less than or equal to zero. Now the convention in most uh, textbooks nowadays, uh, the way I learned it was this way, but the convention in most textbooks is this to be an equals instead of a less than or equal to. I like to think of these as opposites of each other. I think it clicks better with students. Now um, step three, see if your claim matches H naught or H1. Well, mu sub d is greater than zero obviously matches H1, so our claim matches H1. Now it says put first list in L1, second list in L2, highlight L3, and enter L1 minus L2. Okay. First list in L1. What they're talking about is, remember how we said this was 1? That means we're going to put the red values in L1, and we'll put the blue values in L2. It has nothing to do with the order that you run across that in your your problem. It all goes back to which one you specify as 1 and 2 here. So we put 1 in L1 and we put our second population, second sample in L2. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go do that. Okay, so I'm going to press my um, stat button, enter on edit, and then we'll clear those out.
point four two five. Point five one one. Point seven one two. Point six five one. Point four nine nine. And point five oh five. Four two five five one one seven one two six five one four nine nine five oh five. Okay. And then we'll put our blue values in L2. So I got um point four oh four point six two two point six oh five point seven one nine point eight one three and point three five zero. Okay, looks like I got them all entered correctly. Now while I'm here, notice that the uh, alpha is 0 0.05. Um, so let's go ahead and write that down on our problem. Okay, let's go back to our steps. Okay, um, we just did that. Then it says highlight L3 and enter L1 minus L2. Well, let's see what in the world I'm talking about there. If you press your right arrow key, you're over in L3. Now when I say highlight L3, you have to actually up arrow, and you should see L3 highlighted up here. And then we'll type second one minus second two. And you should see down at the bottom L3 equals L1 minus L2. Again, you have to highlight L3 before you do that. And then you press enter. Now it doesn't do anything real exciting, it just subtracts these numbers. 0.425 minus 0 .404, 0 0.511 minus 0.622, and so forth. So I suppose if you if you just have a lot of trouble entering into that formula, you could just do it by hand and uh, put these values in L3. Okay. Then it says exit out. So we're going to do a second mode to exit out. Tells us to find the p-value using the t-test. So let's do stat, go over to tests, choose t-test. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're working with data. Um, so I'm going to left arrow over, put my flashing cursor on data, and press enter one time. Now move sub zero. If you remember from before, this was always a number off of our claim, H0 or H1. And for these mash pair problems, it's always zero. So put zero in. So that's the number you always have on the right side. Now your list, we want it to say L3. So to get to say L3, if yours doesn't say it, you do second three. And I'll press enter. Frequency is always one. We never want to change that. Okay. And we come down to here, at least in this class. And this is the symbol off of your H1. Symbol off of our H1 was a greater than. So I'm going to write her over, put my flashing cursor on the greater than, and press enter. And down arrow to calculate, and then press enter. And the P equals is our um, P value. So P is equal to 0.6825. Okay, let's go back to our steps. We just found a p value. I only got two step fives. I guess that should be step six. Why did I automatically change the number? Oh well. <laughs> our second step five. Um, if p value is less than alpha, well, p value is 0.6825, alpha is 0.05. It's not less than, it's greater than. So if p value is greater than alpha, it says accept h naught. So. We're going to accept H0. Now H0 and uh, H1 are opposites of each other. So if I accept H0, that means I reject H1. And since our claim matches H1, whatever we say about H1 is what we say about our claim. So that means we're going to reject our claim. And I, actually there's nothing circled. Never mind that. Because the entire proof is your um, answer. Um, you can't just say accept or reject claim. Uh, all of this justifies um, why do you get the result you do. Okay. 
Let's talk about confidence intervals. Um, Constructing a confidence interval for the difference between two population means. If we're doing it by hand, this is the formula to use. Lower bound is d bar minus t alpha divided by 2. That's our um, off of our t distribution table. And then S sub D, and, and um, which is our standard deviation of the differences. D bar, of course, is the mean of the differences. <coughs> N is the number in our sample. Now, when I talk about the number in our sample, I'm talking about how many matched pairs. So I'm not counting them individually for the, uh, for, um, I didn't write them down. Let me go up here. This one, the N would be 6. The N would not be 12. Okay. And then um, you, you calculate it. So it's not horrible by hand, but um, let's take a look at it on the calculator. <coughs> and um, I think we're dealing with the same uh, numbers. 0 0.425, 0 0.511, yeah, same numbers. So for our TA3, TA4, we're going to uh, find a confidence interval of the differences um, of the previous problem. So we use these steps. Put first list in L1, second list in L2, highlight L3, and enter L1 minus L2, and then exit out. That's what we just did. Then, we're going to do stat button, right arrow to test, choose T interval, and um, then choose data, L3, 1, and confidence desired, and then calculate. And this will give you your interval. For example, in this one, it's 99% confidence interval is what we want. So problem number two, we want 99% confidence interval. Now notice, uh, create a 99% confidence interval about the population mean difference between red and blue. Now notice how red is first here again and blue is second. Um, so that's what, what would tell me to put red in L1 and blue in L2. So the order uh, does, does make a difference in, um, in problems. Okay, so let's go um, do our... T interval. Okay, so I press my stat, go over to test, and um, I think it's number eight, but let's see. <coughs> and press enter. Okay, well, we got data again because our remember our differences are in L3. Then I'll down arrow, and this already says L3. If it, yours doesn't say L3, do second three to put L3 there. Frequency is always one, and the confidence interval for this particular problem, we said we wanted 99%. So if yours doesn't say 0.99, go ahead and put 0.99, enter, and then choose calculate. And um, this would be our answer. So we're going to have negative 0.31. Four five, and then point two four 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 six, and you interpret this just like you did before. You know we're ninety nine percent confident the true value of the differences between the two um, uh, mash pairs um, fall somewhere in this range. Now. Um, you may be saying, well, how can it be negative? Well, remember when we're subtracting these, um, it's very possible to get negative because if red is smaller than blue, like you got 10 here and 20 here, 10 minus 20 would give you a negative 10. So negative is perfectly acceptable. You'll get very similar results if you flip them around, if I put blue here and red here, um, but the, the signs will be kind of messed up. Um, so again, the reading of the problem is kind of critical for the confidence interval and for the um, for the claims. Anyway, that was uh, testing claims and doing confidence intervals about um, uh, mashed pairs um, for for mean.